Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Dave Cost. I'm part of the fire investigation team, uh, and this is Dexter. Dexter's our regional fire investigation dog. We, our job is to uh, go to fire scenes once the fire's been put out and try and assist the fire investigation team to find out if it's been set deliberately. Dexter's job is to actually locate and tell me if there's any uh, what we call ignitable liquids, so petrol, diesel, white spirit, anything like that, uh, which your arsonist could have used to actually start the fire. Dexter's six years old, he's a, um, a, what's called a blue room, a working cocker spaniel, uh, and he's been in service now for five years. Dexter's quite a character. Um, his favourite thing in all, in all the world is food. Uh, he'll, he'll find food absolutely anywhere, which for us is a bit of a nightmare at fire scenes where you've got fire in the kitchen and you've got uh, raw food that's now cooked food. Obviously, he'll try and find it. Uh, his next favourite thing is a tennis ball. Obviously, that's what he's trained to find, so he really gets excited to After that, uh, his main hobby is finding water. So if we go out for a walk or anything like that, he will find the slightest bit of puddle, he'll lie in it, he'll roll in it, and he'll get himself covered in mud. Um, it's a bit of a unique thing in the fact that we stay together off duty as well. So Dexter lives with us 24-7, um, so we are still getting to walk him and feed him off duty, and he can still live as part of the family. So when he's off duty time, he gets to be pampered like a pet, and he's on duty, um, he has to work the fire service. We'll go to any uh, scene where we're asked to go, uh, for whatever reason, so it could be uh, as small as a wheelie bin fire uh, or it could be a major, major explosion, anything like that. And depending on the size of the job will depend on how long we, we stay at the scene. So sometimes we could be there for multiple days carrying out searches, uh, other times we might only be there five or ten minutes. So it's, it's entirely dependent on the size of the job. And Dexter so far, we, we average about 200 jobs a year. So Dexter in his, in his five year career so far is, is easily getting up to the thousand jobs mark. And included in those will be lots of um, small scenes and also some of the major ones. Dexter's also been involved in some of the major murder inquiries across the East Midlands, uh, resulting in, in convictions. So he's, he's, he's quite, a, quite a good asset to have for the fire service. Dexter's trained um, initially just to find tennis balls. It's all service dogs are trained initially to find a tennis ball, and then what they do is they, they use the tennis ball as the reward. So when we're selecting dogs, what we're looking for is a dog that's absolutely mad and besotted with a tennis ball. Um, you can see from here that Dexter all he wants is the ball. He's not interested in anything else. And then we use that, that's part of the drive, we use that drive there. And in Dexter's case, Dexter's trained to find accelerants, all liquid accelerants. Um, and then he's taught that if he finds me petrol, he will get the ball. So the, the ball is, is, is the focus, so the finding the petrol is a byproduct. All he actually wants is the tennis ball. As you can see, he's absolutely um, besotted with it. And anything, anything we do, look, wherever, wherever the ball goes, the eyes go. That's, that's how much he wants that ball. And we're just using that drive to find the petrol. So he, he's, he's not interested in petrol at all, he just wants his tennis ball. And he knows that if we find the tennis ball, that if we find the petrol, he'll get the tennis ball. So just to demonstrate what, what we're sort of saying, we've, we've got a tennis ball, we've got a football. Um, Dexter's not interested in a football whatsoever, so we can get a football a good boot. Don't flap an eyelid. Send the tennis ball. Dexter's a, a working cocker spaniel, uh, he's six years old. He's been in service with, with the fire service for five years now, and he does around 200 jobs a year. And his nose is around two million times better than ours. Right, so what we're going to do now, um, we're at our uh, joint training centre, which is where we do all our firefighter training. Uh, here at Ripley. Uh, these vehicles here are used for road traffic collision training, but because Dexter's also trained to search vehicles, we have to train on the vehicles. So we use these vehicles before they start to cut them up just to be able to train Dexter. Um, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do an outside search. So we're gonna put some uh, accelerant on the outside of the vehicle. And then we're also gonna put some on the inside. So as he gets to search the inside as well. Uh, just to go through the process of, of, of what we actually do, um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put gloves on because we don't want to leave any human scent behind or, or 
minimum amount of human scent just to make sure Dexter's only looking for what we want him to look for. All of our samples are carried in an airtight container uh, and they're all individually labelled. So um, this particular one is petrol, so we're going to use petrol today. Uh, and we're going to use uh, a one mil pipette. One of the uh, issues with the dog, what we constantly asked is how much will the dog, how low a scent will the dog find? Um, for us, it's more a case of how much is too much. So we're going to use a one milliliter prepare and we're only going to put a tiny little spot out at the end of the prepare onto the actual car itself. So we're going to put something on the roof. So we get some petrol and then we literally, that's it, one spot. That's all we're going to put on. And then also because we're preparing this vehicle and um, we're also going to put a little sample inside. So we're going to put a tiny, tiny, tiny sample just on top of it. The one thing with these dogs more than anything else is that less is more. So the smaller the sample, the easier it is for the dog to find it. The larger the sample, the dog starts to get confused because the scent picture is too big. So unlike the um, police explosive dogs where they're also trained to find big bombs and little bombs, we're only interested in trace evidence. We're not interested in Morrison's petrol station. So once everything's finished and sealed off, the last thing we do is take the gloves off uh, and then those gloves get disposed of because obviously we don't, they could have a trace of excellent on them and we don't want them anywhere near the dog. So next, all we've got to do now is go and fetch Dexter. Right, so what we're going to do now then, we're going to get Dexter ready for his search. So the uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to get his boots and his harness. Um, as we said earlier, everything has to become pre-packed and pre-sealed. So we actually break the seals, as we've done there, and we'll do that at the scene to make sure that there's no contamination or no risk of contamination in there. Uh, and then, obviously, all records are kept of what boots are used where and when, and, and when they're clean and when they're not clean. So this is set number 12. So each, each boot, each set of boots, um, has their own number on it so um, we don't bother with front left leg front right leg and all the rest of it we do we do have the set number so each set stays together uh, these are vibram soles so the proper um, training shoe walking boot type soles and just to get them ready we'll open them out ready for the next day and also um, so this is harnessed on the floor Again, all clean, all certified clean, ready for use. You get the harness and the lead together, so they stay together as a set. And then just in case anybody can't work out what he's doing, obviously he's got his um, requirements on the side, so that tells you what he is. And then we get him out. Obviously four boots, one for each port. A lot, some dogs don't like wearing the boots. Um, Dexter's had them on since he was a puppy and it just, he, as you can see, he doesn't, he doesn't bat an eye, he doesn't flinch. Um, he's quite happy to have them on. And what these will do, even though the car itself is undamaged, um, these will help to give him grip because obviously his claws are going to slide on the paintwork. Whereas these will act a bit like Spider-Man and give him a bit of a grip. Give you something to grip onto. Okay, so that's Dexter ready for a search. The only thing we need to make sure now, obviously, is we've got tennis ball, which we have. Away we go. Right, so what we're going to do now then is we're going to do a search of the inside of the vehicle. Um, 
Assuming that the vehicle can't, the doors can't open, but the windows open, um, Dexter would go in through the window without a problem. So we're just going to take him off his lead, chuck him through the window, and let him search it himself. Thank you, man. He's got it. And there you go, he's got it straight away. Look. Fine, fine. Good boy! Good boy! Next to the doobie! Yeah! Have a doggy! Have a boy! Good boy! What's he got? Good boy! Good boy! Go boy! Go boy! Because he'll just pile off the car. Has he got it? Yeah, he's got it! Go boy! Dexter, come! Come on! Hey! Dexter! You coming, doggy? Top doggy, aren't you? Yeah. yeah, clever boy. So as with all members of, of fire service staff, um, everybody should have an ID card. Uh, any any member of fire service personnel will always have a, a card to show you that they are who they say they are. It's exactly the same for Dexter. Um, just to confirm that Dexter is actually a fire dog and he does work for the fire service. He gets his own ID badge as well. So this is our vehicle. This is what we um, travel to and from fire scenes in. Um, it's fully air conditioned, obviously. There's lots of safety features and lots of equipment inside. So we're just going to take you on a quick tour around and just show you some of the main main features that we've got. So inside the vehicle, we've obviously got a, a double cage for Dexter. Um, we've only got the one dog, but we've got two cages, so we can always transfer in between cages if he gets too dirty to fire. Um, the vehicle itself is fully air conditioned. We've also got a, a little monitor here, which is a little alarm system. And what that will do is, uh, if we leave the engine on, so we've got a run lock facility, so we can take the key out, leave the engine running, leave, leave him in with the air conditioning on. That's his safety backup. That's constantly monitoring the uh, atmosphere and the temperature. And then it, te it texts me to tell you what the temperature is. So if the temperature rises above a set limit that we've already set, it'll go into alert and it will text me and say, you need to go back to the car because Dexter's getting a bit warm. So we're constantly monitoring his safety all the time. We've also got close to hand um, canine trauma kit. So this is all the kit that we need. Um, this is the third dog we've had in service and unfortunately this one is the clumsiest of the lot. So we've gone to more vets visits and we've had more uh, bumps and scrapes with this one than any of the others. So we've always got our dog first aid kit close to hand uh, exactly where we need it. We've also got a little, uh, little blue bar there which means we can uh, hook the blue bar under the tailgate. We can lock the car with the boot open uh, so no one can get Dexter out, but Dexter can still get fresh air if we need him to do that. He's also got um, his own cool jacket, so uh, if it's still, like it has been recently, a really, really, really hot day, uh, what we can do is we can soak this jacket in water, wring it out and then place it on Dexter, and then Dexter wears it like a, like a normal jacket, uh, but it's to keep him cool, keeps the temperature down on the dog itself. The um, we start at this end, so at this end what we've got is Dexter's decontamination kit. So we've got a, um, a saw, uh, battery operated jet wash, which we can use with the water and we can uh, basically wash Dexter off if we need to, or we can wash me off, or we can wash Kit off, anything we want to do. Once Dexter's been washed off, what we can then do uh, is place him in his um, warm jacket, as we call it, his drying jacket, which is basically a terry toweling style jacket which you can put the dog into and it acts just like a, a drying machine basically. So if we, if we wash Dexter off, put him in his, his uh, drying coat, put him back in the, in the vehicle and then wherever we get, when we get there, he's bone dry again, ready to, to carry out another search. We also have a, uh, a mini fan, so should the temperature get really, really warm, um, we can turn the fan on, we can leave it in the vehicle, we can put it into the boot of the vehicle, um, or we can just use it to dry him off if it's, if it's quite wet. Moving on to the, uh, the sort of main body of it, the forensic side of things, uh, we've got lots of lighting, 
Uh, the lot fire scenes are quite dark, so we need to light them up before we can move the used extra in there. So we've got all the lighting units. We have a, um, a portable gas monitor, which is monitoring the uh, atmosphere within the building, which means that both mine and Dexter's safety is monitored at all times. Every time we go to a fire, um, Dexter wears his boots. Each set of boots is, is pre-sealed in a, a bag, sealed evidence bag, to prove that they're um, clean and not, not contaminated in any way. So we have boots and we have harnesses that are, are all done like that. We have markers, so if Dexter finds anything at the scene, uh, we'll place markers out, each marker indicating uh, the number, so we know straight away number one, number two, number three, so we can work out which indications and in what order. And we also have um, a little little suit that he can wear. So this is what we call his, his chemical protection suit. So if we go to an incident, say, where there's uh, an asbestos risk or anything like that, the risk of the asbestos is obviously to us and they're not to Dexter. So try and keep his coat from getting asbestos on it. Uh, we'll we use that and then that will get thrown away at the end of the incident. Moving on, um, if we go anywhere near water, Dexter obviously has to have his life jacket on. Uh, we all carry, uh, obviously on the fire engines, they've got the dry suits and the um, life jackets and everything else. If Dexter goes near water, obviously he'll have his life jacket on. So if he searches, uh, say a boat or a canal boat or anything like that, then we'll put him in his life jacket for his safety. And then finally, he's working a height gear. So uh, if we need to get Dexter onto a flat roof or anything like that, we'll use his harness. So we have, again, because of the forensic issues, it's all sealed and, and um, tied off inside evidence bags, certified as clean. We'll put his working height harness on, and what we'll then do is we'll either um, tie him to a line and, and lift him up and down onto buildings. We also have the facility that if he needs to go to uh, into the um, ELP, the aerial ladder platform or anything like that, then he can also, um, we can also set him up with dog tails exactly the same as the harnesses that, that we use so we can have him clipped in at all times we can transfer the clip so as he doesn't fall out the, the help or anything like that unfortunately due to the the current situation we've not been able to have any open day visits this year but we hope you found this virtual one of use and of interest to you um, i'm sorry that we can't meet us in person we'd like to meet you and dexter loves to say hello to people but if you want to keep up to date with his exploits does have his own Twitter site, so if you go to @bidsdog, uh, you can read all about him and see what he gets up to uh, and some of the incidents that we get.